If I ever have the audacity to say that I'm not a fantasy girly and I don't like fantasy books, immediately tell me to shut the fuck up because what was I even talking about? Footnote, she's turning into a fantasy bro. Just putting it out there. How dare you? <laughs> you know, hands were thrown up and you were putting Vaseline on your hair. <laughs> Brandon Sanderson, the mind that you must have to create this world, unmatched. Salutations, my dearest friends. My name is Samantha, and today I'm going to be doing another reading vlog. But in this reading vlog, I'm going to be reading a bunch of Brandon Sanderson books. Hello, how are you? Welcome, welcome back to another reading vlog. I have been enjoying filming these so much because I love chatting with you guys. In this reading vlog, we're going to be reading some Brandy Sandy. It was not in my 2024 bingo card that I was going to love Brandy Sandy this much. It took me by surprise. So if you guys saw my last reading vlog, I read Trust of the Emerald Sea and had an absolute time. I had a ball. One of my favorite books that I read this entire year and immediately I was like, oh, I want to read everything that he's ever written. Lucky for me, he's literally written so many books. It's actually insane how quickly he writes. Then I was like, whoa, 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 pump the brakes, Samantha. His backlist is crazy. How are you gonna make your way through that? So I immediately felt like overwhelmed and I asked you guys like, okay, let me know what I should start with. You guys gave me some awesome recommendations. So that is what this reading vlog is going to be. Shout out to all my friends who told me where to start. My friend Mel from Melbine's Fix, she really laid out the whole Cosmere universe for me. I had someone send me the most detailed like graphic Excel sheet with all of the all of the everything. Y'all are amazing. Y'all are brilliant. Thank you so much. So yeah, that is what this video is going to be. Let me rewind. Let me rewind. Give you guys the backstory. My name is Samantha, in case this is the first video you've ever seen. I have been a reader since, oh my gosh, since like ever. My dad is a reader, my mom is a reader. I've been reading since I was a kid. However, I'm predominantly a romance reader. I grew up on Wattpad and fan fiction. I do occasionally love a good cozy mystery. That is a genre I do really, really enjoy. But mainly I do read romance, right? And I like romances that are crazy, bonkers, and wild. So I was never a fantasy girl. The fact that this is my journey right now is kind of different for me. And I'm honestly having a time, a very fun time. So yeah, that's just like a backstory on my reading taste and how at my big age of 26, I've never read a Brandon Sanderson book despite how popular he is. Again, rewinding, I read Trust of the Emerald Sea last month, gave it five stars. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I don't have the physical copy to show you because I convinced my dad to read it. I love that book so much. I basically texted everyone I knew and was like, read this so we can chat about it, please. So yeah, my dad is reading that right now. It is an epic fantasy adventure book with a very loose princess bride reimagining inspiration. Heroin is amazing. She is that girl. Okay, she is adventurous. She is smart. She is kind. She is giving everything she needed to give. Love. Five stars. Love that book so much that now I am compelled to read more Brandon Sanderson. So here we are. That is the backstory. That is the point of this video. Let me tell you guys my TBR. You guys essentially created my TBR because I had no idea where to start. So thank you for helping me because I was just an empty brain truly number one series that you all told me i need to start with was the mistborn series so i heard you i am listening and i'm going to be listening to the audiobook so i don't have that physical copy but i will be starting that one the way it was being described to me was that it's an epic fantasy it has like a found family trope kind of expanding on the idea of what if the chosen one was not good what if they were evil so very excited to read this one. Apparently this is the one you need to read if you want to get into the Cosmere universe. And we're going to pick up some more of his secret projects just because I had such a good time with Trust of the Emerald Sea. And although technically these can connect into like the larger Brandy Sandy universe, they can also be read as standalones. So the first one we're going to read is Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. I saw a lot of people on social media reading this and loving it. I know Reagan from Peru's Project really, really liked it. It's supposed to have a subtle romance in it, which is kind of cute or whatever so we'll read that then i have the sunlit man i actually don't know anything about this one if people are talking about it i'm not seeing it i have no idea what this one is about but um this is also on the tbr that's my tbr that's my update that's my journey and i will talk to you guys in a little bit hello 
filmed the intro about like an hour ago and I am ready to start this video. I think we are going to be starting with Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. This is one of his secret projects that he started on Kickstarter. They can be read as standalones but they do connect loosely to the Cosmere universe. I had a really great time with Trusted of the Emerald Sea. That was one of my favorite books that I've read this year so I wanted to pick up another secret project and everyone is telling me that Yumi and the Nightmare Painter is the one to pick up because it is probably his most romantic book. This cover I got off Amazon but I know there has been like different variations and different special editions. The art for this is absolutely stunning. It feels very like manga inspired Japanese like watercolor. It is so freaking stunning. This edition there is some art like on the end pages that is really stunning but from what I'm realizing is that there is individual chapter art that maybe some of like the first editions had in the book but you can find them on Brandon Sanderson's website. Also able to find them on different like reddit pages and blogs too so definitely recommend searching the art because it adds to the story from what I'm experiencing so far. So basically this story to me is so unique and I don't even know if I could do it justice by explaining it. I actually picked this up because I saw Reagan from Peru's project talking about it. She basically described it as an epic fantasy with a freaky Friday twist to it. And I just was immediately intrigued. So far, the story is being told by a very familiar narrator, Hoyd. It follows our two different characters. You have Yumi, who lives in a world where she, her life is really dedicated to service her people. She dedicated her entire life to be the Yoki Hijo. I really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. That was to summon the spirits so she may request things for the town. It is a very noble profession, but it's also incredibly lonely because her entire life is dedicated to that. She does not have friends. She does not have family. She She's not able to do things that would be from like a selfish purpose. Her purpose is literally to serve the people. So she's very proud of the work and the art that she creates from it, but she's also really, really lonely. And it follows our hero who also is feeling those emotions of loneliness. He is a nightmare painter. Basically, he lives in a world that is covered by the shroud of darkness and from that darkness, nightmares, these beast-like creatures, exist and the only way to get rid of them and protect the town is to essentially paint them into an inanimate object so that is his job he is a nightmare painter another noble profession and he's kind of like a self-proclaimed loner himself you can tell that he really struggles with like different interactions with his friends and with the community around him and he feels very very alone both of our characters are feeling similar emotions but just on different planes of existence until they wake up in each other's world in each other's perspective. I don't want to say like waking up in each other's bodies because it's not exactly that because that would be a little weird and a little icky you know for like a man to like wake up in this woman's body without her consent. You, you see how that could be weird? Brandon Sanderson did not make it weird. Basically he will get sent to her world and the entire world thinks that he is the Yoki Hijo. She is essentially like a ghost alongside him and he is living her experiences in his own body and then vice versa she is living his experiences in her own body but society thinks that am i explaining this correctly here's the thing brandon sanderson your mind your mind the fact that i'm struggling to even explain this plot because it is so incredibly detailed and unique and the fact that you wrote this your mind. Your mind. You're crazy for that. Again, epic fantasy with a freaky Friday twist. They're basically brought into each other's worlds and it is told that the spirits need their help. They don't know what the spirits need help with. They don't know how they're supposed to achieve that goal. They don't even know what planet each other is on. Like, it is, it's a lot. They're navigating each other's worlds and experiences and it is so good so far. I was actually reading this before I even started this video, so we're already like 40% in and I'm having a time. I am having the best time. So, Loving this so far, and that's the first book that we're going to start with. So that is my bookish updates. By the way, this vlog is going to be very, very chatty. All my vlogs are very chatty, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Hoping once I make a good enough dent into Brandon Sanderson's backlist, I will do like an updated video on my favorites where you'll see my more cohesive thoughts versus my vlogs is literally like you're my best friend we're hanging out together this entire week and i'm just gonna yap 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 i just had to put that out there because my vlogs have been really really long <laughs> recently hello hello it is what's today thursday and i think i got a text message sorry um i think <laughs> i 
<laughs> I'm giggling and kicking my feet over here. Okay, let me let me compose myself. Hold on, my coworker texted me. Why is everyone texting me today? I feel like this angle is terrible and this update is chaotic, but I really wanted to read his secret projects because the writing style seems a little bit different. They're essentially standalones. Like, yes, some of them do connect to his larger Cosmere universe. Also being described as books that you have the ability to read as standalones. And that's how I felt about Trust the Emerald Sea. I didn't really feel like I was missing any pieces to it. Books also aren't as long as some of his other books. The writing style just seems a little bit more accessible. <laughs> I have makeups. I am just sitting here talking in my car and those men are like having a fight outside. Girl, be more aware of your surroundings. Here's the game plan. I have the physical copy of You, Me, and the Nightmare Painter. So I think I'm going to listen to the audiobook and read that at the same time because I love that immersive experience. And then I think I'm going to listen to the audiobook of Mistborn because that's a 25 hour audiobook, babe. That's a 25 hour audiobook. And I think we could listen to that while we work and... That's it. That's my game plan. I'm going to get some coffee, head to work, text this girl back, and I'll talk to you later. Hi, hello there. I look a little bit of a mess. I'm working from home today, and it's just like a chill day. I'm allowing myself to be in my pajamas today. I did take a shower, but... I really wanted to be comfortable. Like I was in the beginnings of a flare up with my endometriosis. So I stayed in my pajamas, got my heating pad. And honestly, it wasn't that bad of a flare up. I feel like, side note, I got a surgery in December and I feel like it's been really helping. Like a flare up like this would have had me out for the rest of the day, had to call off of work in the bed. This flare up, I was actually able to like manage the pain, which is something that would have never been possible before. So. Thumbs up for that, but I do look a little crazy. I am on my lunch break right now and I'm going to read. I'm going to read some more of Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. I took off the dust jacket. It has a dual narration and I love the narrator of Hoyd. He was also the same narrator in Trust of the Emerald Sea. I just love, I love him so much. I'm having a great time with this. So far it's feeling like a five star read. So I'm going to lay down on my lunch break and read a little bit. strawberry pillow it does not match my bedding whatsoever but it's comfortable my friend sarah got it for me and i freaking love it anyways i am laying down right now so i just took a bath that's why my skin is so greasy because i like drenched myself in oil flare up came back just a little bit so i'm giving you this update in my bed i am currently on chapter what chapter i'm on chapter 29 my audiobook says i'm about 72 percent in. I really want to finish this but I don't know because it's already like 11 o'clock at night and I do have work tomorrow but I'm loving this so much like I love 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 this it's hard to even put into words I was literally tearing up in this last chapter because I am so invested and so connected to both of our characters they're both immensely flawed characters but in like a beautiful way that just perfectly depicts life and how people are flawed but they still are dreamers and they still have hope and it's just like oh, it's so beautiful because you recognize that the characters are making mistakes but they're having such a wonderful character arc that you can't help but root for them in this fantastical world they're so realistic and i love them i love them so much this is also incredibly romantic if you are a romance reader i feel like you would just eat this up it is a romance as well the two characters their connection it's so sweet it feels like a very classic romance almost like pride and prejudice vibes longing glances the subtle touch the way they're constantly thinking about each other and wanting each other to be happy it is just oh my god stop it is so good it's such an immersive experience because the art for this book is incredible i need to look up what artist did i don't know if it's the same artist for all of them but there's basically chapter art for every few chapters beautiful stunning stunning art no idea who the artist is but they depicted the characters exactly how i'm imagining them I'm listening to the audiobook and reading it physically so if you're listening to the audiobook it gives a description of the art like a very detailed description of it like the visually impaired or people who are only listening to the audiobook but having that description plus seeing the art plus reading it 
full immersive experience. I can perfectly picture everything that's happening. I'm starting to realize is what really makes these books such a standout is the small little details. Writing style, the narrator, the art, the way everything is being told to you and being pieced together. Just all of these small little details that add up to be this fully immersive, fully descriptive experience. And it's like, I love it. I love it. Brandon Sanderson, the mind that you must have to create this world, unmatched. I, I'm such a fangirl at this point. I'm predominantly a romance reader, right? And that is because I just love the connection between characters, that human connection of someone feeling like your soulmate. I love that, right? I love the description of that. I love meet cutes and seeing people fall in love. And this book is giving me that. It is absolutely giving me that. And of course, I do love like wild bonkers romances or super steamy romances. And I'm still always gonna love it. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm still always gonna love it. But like, this book just doesn't feel lacking because it is romantic in a different way. And I fucking love it. There are so many quotes in here that have me like giggling and kicking my feet. Like I love our characters so much. I just, oh, I love it. I wish I would have started annotating this, but I can definitely see myself rereading this book. So I'll probably annotate it on a reread, but right now we're just, we're just vibing. I really should need to go to bed, but I also really want to finish this. So... Thank you. Thank you. Wait, you guys. I didn't know. You have no idea what happened right now. You have no idea. And then, and she, you have no idea. Did, I did not expect that. I, I did not expect. I, girl, I have to finish reading my book, okay? We are in a pivotal moment where something is happening that I did not expect and I'm losing my fucking mind. This is insanity. This last chapter, I'm, I feel like I'm having a panic attack right now literally like crying right now in this last chapter oh my god i hadn't i had no idea i had no idea my dogs are like freaking out right now because they can sense my chaotic emotions and they're like girl are you okay no i'm not okay i look such a mess these are the worst clips ever but like this is literally making me cry right now wasn't even capable of giving you guys an update last night I just woke up by the way I was not even capable of giving you guys an update because I was in tears I was bawling obviously I'm giving you me in the nightmare painter five stars like obviously I think it was stunning divine so beautifully written I loved the fantastical element loved the magic system excuse me my dog's like huffing and puffing over here I don't know why you okay are you okay? Anyways, I was so attached to all the side characters and I was really, really attached to the main characters and their romance and their development. I loved how they were so incredibly flawed, but in the same token, you saw their character growth. I loved the underlying discussion of art versus AI. I loved everything about it and I feel like I can't even formulate like proper thoughts because that last chapter like blew my mind. I did not expect that plot twist. I did not expect to get so emotional. I'm giving it five stars and I will probably talk about this book more in this video and just like expand on my thoughts but just know it was amazing. It was so so good. 
we are back in the car today because i had to go into the office to work i'm at a coffee shop right now i'm pretty early i have about 45 minutes before i need to get to work so i'm gonna get some coffee and probably start our next book this book since i do have some time in the morning to read i'm gonna continue the vibes of listening to the audiobook and reading it physically because it's just the best experience I decided to pick this one up because i think i just want to finish all of his secret projects because i did love the two that i've read i actually have not heard anything about this one i don't know what this one is about I love the art inside these books are so beautiful so i'm going to start before i head into work today and i'll probably also read it on my lunch break and while i'm working i'm going to be listening to the audiobook of mistborn i am i'm on like chapter three right now and i'm kind of slowly getting into it i definitely feel like the writing style is a little bit different because this is one of his more epic fantasy novels it's 25 hours the audiobook is 25 hours and it's it's a lot a lot more world building and a lot more characters it's a little bit more intimidating to hop into the series than it was to like pick up one of his secret novels but i'm i'm vibing i'm vibing it's basically set up in a world okay someone pulled up right in front of me awkward ba -da -da -ba -ba -ba. Hello, sir. I'm just a little intimidated by this 25 hour audiobook. I don't know what it is. Writing style just feels different. This one feels a little bit more intense. Secret projects, the world building was very fluid and easy to just fall into, versus this one is a lot more descriptive and I feel like I have to pay attention a little bit more. And another car pulled up right in front of me. Guys, there is so many places to park right now. I was literally in an empty parking lot. Okay, love you guys. I'm gonna go get my coffee and I will. We'll update you guys later. Oh my god! Oh my god! Prepare to be sick of me. Prepare to be sick of me. Do you guys see this? Do you guys see this? Okay, if there's something, I'm gonna hold this like a wee child. Well, no, because actually I'm out of breath. I have strawberries on my sweater just so you know. If you guys didn't know, I am obsessed with strawberries. I love them. There's many reasons that I'm obsessed with strawberries. First, love the taste. Second, when my younger sister, who I'm super close to, was little, she used to have this favorite book that I would read to her. It was like The Big Hungry Bear. I don't even remember. I'm gonna put it right here, okay? About this little mouse, little mouse hiding a strawberry and we would read that book and eat strawberries and it was so cute and then some of my favorite books like brutal prince by sophie lark and mixed signals by bk borison have to do with strawberries so strawberries have become my whole personality and for almost two years i have been looking for this baby right here this is a stool that home goods makes you can find it sometimes at like a tj maxx or even like a marshall's this damn strawberry blew up on tiktok okay people were going feral for this strawberry and i couldn't I couldn't find it anywhere and I wanted it so badly you guys have no idea I would text every single person I knew and be like if you find this at a TJ Maxx at a Marshall's at a home goods immediately buy it I will sell you the money I will pay for the shipping co-workers and I we go into the office about two days a week and we have lunch together every week we had a routine of going through Marshall's and TJ Maxx just strolling perusing just to find this strawberry I would call store after store after Here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. I did not find one. I found two. I found two. I don't care if you think I'm being dramatic. Do you think I care? No. I have serotonin pumping through my body. I found two. Did I need to? No. Did I buy two? Yes, I did. He asked me, oh, did you buy like the second one to resell it? I would never. I would never. First of all, I think people who buy things just to resell them at exorbitant prices are truly dissatisfied with their life and need therapy. So I will not do that. One is in my bathroom because I have a strawberry bathroom and then one is here in front of my bookshelves. I was so excited. And I tell you, I had a zero chill. There was not a chill bone in this body, yaddy yaddy. We were going to Target and there was a Marshalls and a TJ Maxx right next to the Target. with my mom and my younger sister and I was like, just drop me off. I'll meet you guys in Target. Did not expect to see anything. I went into the Home Goods first and I saw an orange and a lemon. No. Yes. An orange and a lemon. I saw a lemon for sure and then something else. And I was pissed. I was like, oh, the strawberry stool was here. It would have been right next to its brethren. I was very sad. So then I went to TJ Maxx just, again, perusing I hit the corner and there were two stacked upon each other 
the gasp I gasped the entire store looked at me like I was crazy and I was like listen y'all don't understand y'all don't understand y'all don't understand I was I didn't even grab a cart that is how little faith I had that I hadn't even grabbed a cart so I was literally hunched over these strawberries guarding them with my life called my mom bring the car bring the car because remember she went to Target and I was gonna meet her there I was gonna walk over there bring the car and a cart and I brought I bought both Right, uh, I can't breathe. These jeans are literally sucking the life out of me, but I needed to show you guys that. And, <laughs> and it is now my baby. And if you're wondering, it's not actually heavy, I'm just weak. It's actually pretty hollow. I wouldn't actively sit on this thing, uh, because I got a fat ass, but um, it looks real cute in front of my bookshelves. Strawberries are quite literally in season right now, so I am thriving everywhere I go. It's a good thing because it's fueling my hyperfixation, but it's a bad thing because I'm a broke bitch. I have a little haul for you. Nothing too crazy, but I'll go ahead and show you guys anyways. You guys are actually resting on the strawberries still. You look so cute. You look so cute. And we're going to open this package. It's from my friend Tiffany. I think I know what it is. Oh, she went to a book signing that I was not able to go to, and Gianna Darling was there, and I think she got me a signed copy. So let's see. Oh my gosh, <gasps> Tiffany. Okay, I'm not gonna read the note because that's special for me. Oh my god, that's gonna make me cry. Ugh. All I do is cry on this damn app. She got me some Sophie Lark swag because Sophie Lark was at this book signing. It is a strawberry keychain. Uh, I'm gonna put this on my keys right now. She got me a signed copy of Serpentine Valentine by Gianna Darling. This is a sapphic dark academia romance that I fell in love with this year. It was one of my favorite romances I read this entire year so far, and honestly, I think like ever. And it's a Medusa retelling. It's stunning. So beautifully written. It says my name and everything. Oh my god, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Thank you, Tiffany. This book really meant a lot to me. I have a whole reading vlog on it where I read it, and you guys know how emotional I got over it because it just... The way it embodied, like, the queer experience, and I felt so seen. The sapphic romance made me feel so seen. The fact that Tiffany took the time to get this for me, thank you. I love you and then my friend jess also went to that same signing and there was a different edition of serpentine valentine by jim darling it was an edition that hello lovely did that i missed out on because i wasn't subscribed to their trope of the month box at the time so i was like super bummed that i missed out on it and she grabbed it for me and happy to have that is it signed i can't remember if she got this signed for me as well <gasps> she did Jessica got this sign for me as well. So thank you guys. That is so special. I already saw this copy. I just bought this one to add to my Brandy Sandy collection. And then Bloom sent me a copy of The Deer and the Dragon by Piper CJ. This is another fantasy book that I'm really intrigued by. I didn't even notice this also had some art in it. I love bookish art. This is really cute. I'm going to use this as a bookmark. I'm really excited about this because Piper CJ wrote The Night and Its Moon and I love that book so I'm happy to have this one. I think those are the only books that we got recently but like I said I did make a little purchase on Target for their sale so I'll have some more books to show you in this video. I am trying to be more intentional with my book buying because I don't have a lot of space but there's so many pretty editions and books that I want. Anyways, I went to Sephora today because they were having a sale. I got a bunch of products from NARS on TikTok watching makeup videos. And it just like gave me like 2016 beauty influencer nostalgia. So I decided to treat myself. So I got the Soft Matte Complete Foundation because your girl is an oily gal. I also got the Soft Matte Complete Concealer. This is like a pot concealer that everyone raves about. And I also got a cream bronzer. This is in the shade Laguna. I think this is the original one. Yeah. Laguna 02. That was fun to get new makeup goodies. I'm really now. noticing that I spend the majority of my day sitting in front of this desk. I've been filming in this corner a lot recently. My dog cannot decide if he wants to stay in or out. You're in, dude. You are in. You were literally scratching at the door crying. It's because I'm working. Like, he wants to be in here if I'm giving him my undivided attention and we're taking a nap. But if he comes in and sees that I'm not sleeping, he's like, oh, this was not what I signed up for, ma'am. Just find a spot and you'll be fine. I'm always filming in this corner because I'm always sitting here in front of my desk, either working or working. <laughs> oh, I'm burdened by corporate America. I'm taking a small itsy bitsy break on some Brandon Sanderson books because I am realizing that it's becoming a little bit of an obsession with me. And the thing about me is I can get hyper fixated on things like 
hyper fixated. I have a very um, addictive and impulsive personality. It's something I recognize about myself. I don't even know if something like that can be hereditary, but you know, a lot of people in my family have that same type of personality, those same traits. And sometimes I will get so hyper fixated and obsessed with something that one, it's all I want to talk about. And two, it's all I can focus on. And in my brain, I'm like, I want to call off for like a week straight and read Brandon Sanderson's entire backlist. I want to buy every single book that he's written plus the special editions and then I have to take a step back and be like Sam that is not healthy behavior <laughs> that is not healthy behavior you can't call off to read you can't spend your entire life savings on special editions on Macari like breathe relax so we're reading a different book so I can break this hyperfixation that we're having right now. We're going to read more Brandy Sandy. Don't you fear. Never you fear. I just, I needed to, I needed to calm down a little bit. So, that was a long explanation to tell you I am reading something else. Very rarely request or read or receive arcs just because I am a mood reader and I know myself and my schedule that I don't want to commit to something that I'm not able to follow through on like a review or whatever that arc team is requesting. So I really only request or accept arcs that I know for sure like this is something I'm interested in and one of those books was Midnight of Ashes by Tessa Hale. As soon as I got the email for this arc I was like Oh yeah, we're reading this right now. We're reading this right now. So it is Midnight of Ashes by Tessa Hale. It is the second book of her, I think the series is called Dragons of Ember Hollow. I adore Tessa Hale. She is a fantasy paranormal author. A lot of her books are wide shoes or reverse harem, so definitely like romanticy. I love her, okay? There needs to be a case study on what she's doing and what she's putting in her books because uh I eat them up like candy. I finish them in one sitting. They're always so engaging and I just, they're fun, you know? So this is definitely more romance than like a Brandon Sanderson epic fantasy. But for me, I love and enjoy both in equal measure. This is a series that you have to read in order. I would not recommend jumping into the second book in the series because you will be so confused. What's the first book called? Twilight of Embers? I'm pretty sure it's called Twilight of Embers. Loved that book. It was actually my first five star of this year, 2024. I'll give you like an overview of the series. Follows our heroine who is headed to college. She grew up in an orphanage because her parents died at a very young age and she's really struggled with connecting to people and always feeling like an outcast. So she goes to college hoping it's a fresh start, kind of just wants to like blend in the background, get her degree, do her thing. Well, when she gets there, she ends up meeting a couple of guys that she has an instant connection with. Our heroes, this is a reverse harem. They're all amazing. They're all book boyfriends. And she immediately notices this connection that she has with them. And she soon finds out that they are dragon shifters and she is their fated mate. So that's essentially like the general synopsis of the whole series. And I love it. Again, the first book ended in a cliffhanger. So I've been like waiting not patiently because I was not patient about it. I was waiting, craving the second book. So we're reading that. It was only a six hour audiobook, which is kind of short and I'm already like four hours in. So I will definitely finish it today and then we will hop back in on the Brandy Sandy train. Yes, yes. Although we might have to reevaluate our TBR because I'll, I was talking on TikTok uh, about the books that I was reading and everyone was like wait why are you reading The Sunlit Man you should not read that unless you've read his Stormbreaker series I can't remember what series they called it but they said that is really not a standalone so we might reevaluate or I might just not listen to people and do whatever the fuck I want but we'll see the outfit I have on today super cute a little dirty I got food on it but it's super cute I feel adorable in this matching set whenever i have a matching set i feel like i could conquer the world anyways i'm gonna have a little snack right now i made myself a little fruit salad yummy yummy fruit salad yummy yummy it's uh bananas strawberries and green apples and then i have a little bit of caramel caramel how do you guys say it do you say caramel or caramel i don't know what i say to be honest i go back and forth but i have some caramel for my green apples and this is so delicious but I keep singing fruit salad, <laughs> yummy, yummy. Do you guys remember that song from The Wiggles? Was it from The Wiggles? I think so. Anyways, um, I'm done with work for the day. Hallelujah. So I'm going to eat my little girl dinner and read. But I don't know what I want to read. We didn't finish our Tessa Hale book because it got really, really busy when I came back from lunch, which was not cute, not cool. Uh, so I might finish this Tessa Hale book and then read... Maybe Mistborn. I gotta jump back into that audiobook. So I think that's the plan. That's the plan, Stan. Oh, 
I've got a package. I got a package. I got a package. Hey, 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 hey. This is perfect timing. Oh, well, my battery's gonna die. That's not perfect timing. Do I even have a charged battery at this moment in time? I don't think so. Let's go find one. I am back. So this is perfect timing because Target was having a buy two, get one free sale with their books. I don't think they're having the sale by the time that I'm posting this. And we bought some books. Yes. Yes, we did. Okay. Brandon Sanderson books, which really fits the theme of this video. This box is heavy. I was good. I only bought three books. Okay. My cart, um, you don't even want to know what my cart looked like. I bought three. I limited myself. Oh my God, this book is ginormous. Wow. I've really been enjoying reading the books physically and listening to them on audio because it's a full immersive experience. I've talked about it before. It's like my new favorite way to read. I'm excited that I have these physical copies now. Although these books are ginormous, definitely bigger than his secret projects. So let's get into it. First one is one that I am reading in this video. It is the first book in the Mistborn series called The Final Empire. I did get all of these in hardcover. Originally, I did not like this cover of this book when I first saw it. But now that I've listened to a little bit of the audiobook and I'm looking at the the cover it fits like I can see I can it fits the story okay makes sense makes sense the next one that I got is kind of a polarizing book and that is the way of kings this is the first book in his stormlight archive series here's the thing when I posted on social media that I was diving into the Brandon Sanderson universe everyone had nothing but great things to say about his books just rave rave raving about all of his books the Mistborn series his secret projects his YA series the only series that I have heard polarizing things about is this one people either love it or hate it there's no in between there's one side that is just like this is epic fantasy nothing will ever beat it and then there's another side that's like nothing happened for 400 pages nothing happened how long is this one it is it is thick it is thick 1001 there's a map i love that the art that's on the end pages i'm really happy to have all the physical copies pretty 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 there's like a sword the next one that i got was warbreaker like i said i asked you guys for recommendations and i would say that it was pretty tied between people recommending warbreaker and the mistborn series so i definitely had to grab these two really happy to have these three now i own one two three four five six of his books we went from zero to six hop in an audiobook do some chores and i'll update you guys later playing video games in the background so if you hear him screaming he's fine okay he's fine don't call paw patrol a book update but first of all can we get into the makeup i'm not gonna lie guys i feel very cute today i sat down because i wanted to film but mainly i just wanted to have like a moment and like play with makeup i'm not going anywhere i just wanted to have like a fun a fun time playing with makeup i think my skin looks so good the foundation i'm wearing is the revlon color stay long wear makeup this is for a combination of oily skin this has been in the drugstore for years and I've never used it and I love the way it looks today. I did also mix the tiniest bit of the Luminous Skin Veil BB Cream from Shop Massey. This is literally a dollar. One dollar on Shop Massey. I love buying makeup from there so I kind of did a little concoction today and it looks very good. Go ahead and update on Miss Born. How far along am I? I'm listening to the audiobook right now. All of the audiobooks that I've been listening to, I've been listening through Hoopla. Normally, I do use Libby, but for some reason, Hoopla just had, like, the better selection with Brandon Sanderson, and all of the ones through Libby had, like, a wait time or a hold, which I normally don't mind, um, but it was just easier to do it through Hoopla. Anyways, I am 25% into the book, and I feel like I'm at a place where I actually understand the synopsis i understand a little bit not gonna lie for the first 20 percent, i had no idea what was going on Z zero idea i it was just simply vibes and i'm not afraid to admit that this one is the series name but the first book is called final empire and it is essentially taking place in a world in a universe where what would happen if the dark lord won what would happen if the chosen one was evil a villain etc etc a long time ago the dark lord or what they're calling the lord ruler seized power and has been reigning terror on this city the city is full of ash and dust the setting and the way everything is kind of explained i don't know if this was like the intention but it's just like where my mind is going is like a setting of dune like a lot of sand a lot of dust a world of ash like this blasted wasteland and there are these group of people called the ska which are essentially slaves forced to do 
do manual labor under the Lord Ruler's command, have no title, and they are abused by people of nobility and the kingdom itself. Magic system is really interesting because it is kind of a mixture of alchemy and elements. Essentially, they ingest different metals and elements and they're able to kind of control them using their body. It's a gift for them to be able to control one element. If you're able to control more than one, you're able to control all of them and that is where you are called a Mistborn who are these very rare powerful beings. This book starts off with a group that is considered to be rebels and thieves. They do have different elemental capabilities and they are using that to hopefully overthrow the Lord Ruler. This is a series that many many people have read so I'm sure you're already familiar with like the basic synopsis. I was not. I knew it was popular but I didn't really know what it was about so hopefully I did that synopsis justice. Everyone was telling me I would love this and I can absolutely see why they were saying that. So far, 25% in, I am really enjoying it. My main thing that I love at and I'm noticing I'm really liking with Brandon Sanderson is I really love his female heroines and how he writes them. Our heroine Vin in this book, she comes from a really tough background. She herself is a misborn, but she doesn't even recognize or understand her own power because she has been continuously pushed down and abused by the people around her. She is so strong and resilient and smart and kind and I really do enjoy her so far and I'm interested to see like how she's going to play into this rebellion essentially and then you follow our other character i don't really remember how to pronounce his name kelsier i think is how you pronounce his name he's also a misborn and he's very powerful he is a little mischievous and vindictive and impulsive but in the same token you can also tell that he is extremely kind and loved fiercely by like the people around him maybe because dune 2 did come out recently and there was like a bunch of promos for that but that like setting of sand and dust is how i'm imagining it it's also giving like prince of egypt let my people go vibes it can be miracles if you believed you guys remember you guys remember that movie I remember that movie because my school did like a production of it so maybe also that's why it's in my head but like the ska being like this repressed group of people that is forced into manual labor and they're desperate to be free and they have like this one rebel that is willing to fight. It kind of gives Prince of Egypt vibes a little bit. Show 2, I think it's called Man in the High Castle where it's the idea of if Hitler had won the war. Kind of where my brain is going as I'm reading this um, but in the same token even though I'm seeing those comparisons um, obviously this book is not meant to be compared to to those works of art and even though I see the comparisons I do still think this is incredibly unique and you know this was written a while ago what year was this written one sec one sec 2006 so early 2000s and I feel like this is still such a staple in like the fantasy community like people are still talking about this obviously because it's Brandon Sanderson it's not something that like peaked and was popular and then just kind of fell off Did Brandon Sanderson ever had a movie adaption do you guys know or a tv adaption I don't think so has Brandy Sandy ever had a movie adaption no it has not that's surprising for how loved his books are that are that is surprising and I say that because I think this would make a fantastic movie Trust of the Emerald Sea would awesome you mean the nightmare fantastic movies very interesting just all of my thoughts i'm also really enjoying following brandon sanderson on tiktok just like hearing his commentary on like the publishing industry and creating art in general and it's just really fun so yeah i'm having a great time so that is my update and i think i'm just going to wash this makeup off even though ugh, it's so pretty maybe i'll film another video just so the makeup doesn't go to waste um and then i'm gonna read a little bit more and i'll update you guys later if i ever have the audacity to say that i'm not a fantasy girly and i don't don't like fantasy books immediately tell me to shut the fuck up because what was I even talking about this is this is perfect I love this I'm, I'm obsessed with this I am 80% in I just have a little bit left to go we are finishing this tonight but I wanted to stop and do a bookish update because I have so many thoughts follow back on what I said that I'm surprised this hasn't been made into a movie actually if this was a movie it would be a little brutal okay a little brutal my Canon camera died or all of my batteries need to be charged so we're filming on my Sony so sorry if it's like not the best quality. I wanted to do a little bit of an update though because I have so many thoughts. So many thoughts just jingling around in there. If this was a movie, it would be brutal. Okay, brutal. I actually think 
the fighting the fighting scenes are just so cool the magic system is just so cool but i do think this would actually be a better tv series because there are so many side characters you have a lot of political elements you have the magical element other thing is i'm pretty sure in this video i complained about it being too long again i clearly do not know what the fuck i'm talking about we've already established that it's the per it's perfect it's the perfect length everything feels so intentional and that's what I think I'm really enjoying about Brandon Sanderson's writing and why I'm truly starting to realize why he is a master of his craft is everything is intentional there is not a throwaway line there is not a side character that is not important like you first of all you have to be paying attention second of all the way he ties things together his mind there's not a single side character that i am not like emotionally invested in i love everyone i love kelsier i love vin i love breeze i love ham first of all who decided that these were the names that we were going to give fantasy books like all the time why do they have to be such random names or such complicated names like whatever happened to mark john matthew you know like why does it have to be so complicated? Really fleshed out characters. I adore the way that information is being told to us because it is both informative and engaging. And I feel like sometimes that's where fantasy books for me miss the mark because it either feels like they're just dumping information on us and like I'm literally reading an essay or the magic system might be really cool but it's not well explained or even in a fantastical setting doesn't make sense. Sporn, the way they burn and manipulate metals inside of their body to perform like alchemy, which essentially gives them their powers, is so well explained. It is continuously explained throughout the book in a way that is engaging and you're just like learning tidbits of information, but it just flows with the story so well. The writing style is flawless like absolutely flawless in heroine vin i adore her and in fact it's actually making me very nervous because some stuff is happening right now and this is a very long series so i'm like realistically some of these characters something's gonna happen to them but i don't want anything to happen to them i adore vin because she is a flawed character she is young and she's naive and she's kind of a little selfish at times same token she's so brave and strong and relatable like her personality traits just seem so human and so relatable and the way she overcomes like the abuse that she has had in her past that is like the thing too is there is always like this overarching conversation that you could be having with all of these books like in Yumi and the Nightmare Painter there is a huge conversation about art supporting real people's art is so important and how even though we have like advanced technology like AI it can never really duplicate like true passionate art and it shouldn't either um there's a there's a huge huge conversation about that in Yumi and the Nightmare Painter and then you have this where these people are oppressed and it is set in like this fantastical world but it's not so far-fetched and unimaginable. It is a conversation that could be brought into real life in such a raw, real way. I don't know if like I am describing all of this correctly because I think the writing style is just stunning. Like he is literally Brandon Sanderson for a reason. He's a master of his craft and I'm blown away. Every book that I read by him is hit after hit like he never fucking misses i'm also stressed i'm also very very stressed because i love these characters very deeply and um i don't want anything bad to happen to them and some stuff is happening i don't want to do any spoilers even though a lot of you have probably already read this haven't you i know i'm very late to the train i don't know i don't know why it was taking me so long i i don't know again we've established i don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, okay? It's the definition of not judging a book by its cover because for the longest time, I always said I wasn't a fantasy person, but maybe I just wasn't reading the right fantasy. You guys are gonna roast me and feel free, roast me in the comments, do it. I'm roasting myself at this point. I never wanted to read a Brandon Sanderson because the fantasy bros would always talk about him and the fantasy bros that were coming on my For You page were just not nice. They were just not nice. So I was definitely judging a book by its cover. I was definitely looking at a popular book and thinking, oh, it just, you know, it can't be that good. Uh, no, bitch. It's that good. Get off your high horse, Samantha. It, it's great. He's popular for a reason. He's talented. Maybe that's why he's popular. Um, <laughs> 
I am just so pissed off at myself that I was putting off reading these books. To just like wrap it up, I'm really connected to all of the characters, Kelsier and Vin, and you know, their ragtag group of friends. It has such a found family trope, and that is one of my favorite tropes in fantasy in particular. The idea of the chosen one being evil or like the dark lord prevailing, evil prevailing, is such an interesting concept to explore and I just feel like in this book it's done in a really unique way. I think the moment that I realized that I was really starting to get invested is I was working listening to the audiobook and I was starting to tear up a little bit on a certain chapter and that was the moment I was like wow like I really am into this story like I am about to cry at work right now. I have seen some people complain about how Vin is portrayed in this book which is kind of interesting because I feel like she is at times unlikable also at times very relatable and her mistakes seem just simply human um, but a lot of people were saying that they didn't like how she was portrayed as a woman that was a dicey thing right when a man is writing a female character and that is also another reason why I wasn't picking up Brandon Sanderson uh, because generally when men write female characters they tend to be over sexualized and just don't hit the mark. I don't really notice that in Brandon Sanderson's books, but I can see why people have that complaint with Vin because I started off by reading his secret projects, right? Trust of the Emerald Sea, Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. Those were published and written after Mistborn. And I definitely can see a little bit of growth in his writing style. The characters just feel a little bit more fleshed out in Trust of the Emerald Sea and in Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. The romances seem a little bit more developed. The character relationships seem a little bit more developed. So I imagine as any author he is growing as a writer. I can kind of see the critique but I also actually really like Vin in this book and to be completely honest my favorite thing out of all of the books I've read so far was the main female heroines how independent they were how strong they were relatable they were and the way I was able to connect with them so it's going to be different for so many people on how you connect with a character personally but I really like him I think he's doing kind of kind of a brilliant job I think he's doing the damn thing personally personally anyways I'm rambling I'm going to finish Miss Warren I'm 80% in and I'm just gonna stay up and finish it because I'm loving it. I need to know what happens right now because I'm nervous. If I cry at the end of this book, I'm not going to film it. I'm just going to sit in my bed and, and weep because I feel like some tears are about to happen. But we'll see. We'll hey see. Girl, hey, we're going to do a book update in a second, but I have some packages to open. Good God. Good God. My makeup looks good. I don't know what it is, guys. Actually, I know what it is. I have not really been wearing makeup that often because I haven't felt good. I was having an endometriosis flare. My skin was breaking out. I was working from home. I just wasn't really putting on makeup like I normally do. Recently, because I did get some stuff from the Sephora sale, I've been, like, trying out different, different makeup, and it looks good. Sometimes you just have to remind yourself that you are that girl. You know what I mean? Like, you are a bad bitch sometimes you gotta you gotta remind yourself sometimes i did get more makeup at sephora i'll show you that in a second but we have a package that we're gonna open and then i'll do the book update because we did finish the book last night and girl, i have my thoughts i have so many thoughts okay let's open this package oh my god they take this down bad oh they really said this is secure okay already know what it is it's a package from tessa hale i was talking about this book earlier her new release is coming out the second installment of her dragons of ember hollow series i think by the time that i'm posting this it will already be out but i did receive an arc for it and i read it five stars i absolutely loved it tessa hale just writes really fun fantasy paranormal romances that i eat up i really like her writing style her books are so engaging when i listen to them i usually finish them in like one sitting because i'm just so entertained most of them are like why choose reverse harem i love how she can make multiple characters and love interests so distinct i'm just a huge fan of her writing this is midnight oh my god I almost knocked myself in the face midnight of ashes Stunning, absolutely stunning. And then it also comes with some stickers. Oh, and it's signed. Oh my god, so fun. I kind of already explained the plot in like the earlier clips, but it is why choose dragon shifters, touch her and you'll die. Like literally touch her and you'll die. Very possessive alpha heroes. So if you're into that sort of thing, I feel like you would really enjoy this one. And the audiobook is spectacular because it is a fully narrated cast. Multiple point of views, multiple narrators, and again just really fun campy when I say campy I mean that like literally as the best compliment it means it's like 
fun and extra loved it definite five star and let me show you guys what i got at sephora and then we'll do our last book update i got three foundations so apparently i'm in like a huge like flawless base kick i haven't been really wearing that much eyeshadow recently but any hoozles i restocked on one of my favorite serums this is the niacinamide niacinamide serum from the ordinary my skin loves this stuff I have oily acne prone skin and it tends to get like very red very irritated so niacinamide just kind of like soothes that and then the three foundations I got. This one I saw being talked about on TikTok. It is a black owned company and the shades are really specialized to focus on like darker rich shades which we love to see. If you're not able to like find your shade you can always use them as bronzing sticks because it is like a multi-purpose foundation stick. And I got one of the lightest shades. This is in the shade 330 which I still think might be a little dark but I don't know we'll make it work during the summertime or i'll use it as a bronzing stick and another nars foundation this is the natural radiant long wear foundation our foundations have always been amazing but they're kind of expensive so i've never really tried them but because the sephora sale was happening and i did have a gift card i was like you know what let's go ahead and try this is what she looks like she's real cute or whatever and it's the foundation that i have on today i tried it earlier and i also got the house labs foundation and this packaging is stunning let me open it she looks so luxe i just absolutely adore this packaging although i feel like she could be a little bit more neutral when i tried it on it it did pull a little a little orange so we'll we'll see how she we'll see how she works so convince my dad to read trust of the emerald sea by brandy sandy because here's the thing about me if i'm like loving a book like deeply obsessed with it i want everyone around me to read it for the sole purpose of me being able to talk about it with people like i want to talk about my favorite book with everyone my dad does read occasionally when he's working nights so i don't even know if he's really far into it let me go ask him maybe he'll do like an update for you guys let me go ask him one sec. I'm going to comment in a second update you guys. But Tress of the Emerald Sea was the first Brandon Sanderson book that I decided to pick up. The way it was kind of like pitched to me is it is an epic fantasy adventure novel that is a very slight Princess Bride reimagining. So that was kind of how it was pitched to me. I've never seen Princess Bride. I think my dad has. So I'll ask him if he like felt the vibes. Anyways, it follows Tress who lives surrounded by the emerald sea and the sea is not what you would imagine like the ocean to be it is not what you and i would think like as water this sea is filled with the spores and the way the spores move is through like gusts of air however these spores are extremely extremely dangerous if they get in contact with any liquid a drop of water a drop of sweat they explode and each spore has its own reaction to liquid and is dangerous in its own way not only is it dangerous to travel these seas but it's also forbidden by the kingdom people who like travel these seas are like merchants for trade purposes and then also if you have permission from the king heroine tress is born on this island she never expects to leave this island but one day her best friend charlie is actually sent away and she starts to get worried when he never comes back so she decides to go on this grand adventure of these seas to find her best friend charlie and that is what the you can come in I was just explaining the, um, the book. Just plop down right here. Oh, I am old. Sorry. I don't have a Hello party people. setup. I was just explaining, uh, the plot of the book, but I was pretty much done. I was saying how Tress is going to find her best friend Charlie on these dangerous seas. Mm, yeah, best friend, uh, potential mate. I think she's very much interested in Mate? That I mean, what else are they going to do? Lovers? <laughs> Love interest? Love interest, yeah. <laughs> Hello, people. So, how far along are you in the book? She's now working out the plan to go save him. Like, uh, oh, okay. So, you're so not too, too far. I'm not too, too far. Uh, it's confusing. Uh -huh. I'm still trying to catch up with things. Trying to understand, like, there's no water. They float on air. Mm -hmm. And then there's different seas. But the merchants Spores. who come to the islands get water from some well. Because they have to drink. Well, they have access to water, but it's like man-made like lakes and rivers right. and wells. Yeah, so, you know, it's confusing. And then how it started, I didn't know that it was a third party explaining the story. Hoid. Yeah, so I didn't know that. I was like, wait, is the author talking to me or someone in the book trying to talk to me? Like, it, it felt weird at first. And, you know, I'm very much to read the first chapter, get captivated and continue on. But if I'm not captivated, I usually like, mm, I'll find something else. But I continue reading. I push through the first Oh, so you three. weren't captivated by the first Not by the first, the first. No, because okay. I was confused. I was like, okay. what's going on? I don't know what's what's happening. And 
I like I like something to look forward to. I read something and I'm like, ooh, who's that? And what happened there? And like, who's what's I going on like over here? I feel like once she gets on the sea, you'll feel that way. Okay, so well, I have that now, which is the very difficult task of getting off the island, uh-huh. trying to get past the port lady, mm-hmm. who's just completely horrible, apparently, who's very meticulous and good at her job. So I'm at that point now. I'm like, ooh, okay. How are we gonna do this? Where are we going? How are we getting off? Because this lady's very meticulous and very. Yeah. So you. So, so basically, you're at the part where it's like laying the foundation and the magic system. Yes. I feel like it. It picks up a little bit. Okay. And then the I'm, ending I'm, is. I'm, like, I'm curious cool. now. That I have something to reach for. You know, look forward to. Um, I was I was a little you know saddened at first that he stopped sending the cups and uh-huh. I'm like ah oh, like damn he met someone like wow like what happened. Like, is this going to be, a, you know, the trope of love, of friends to lovers uh-huh. type thing? So I was like, I, I, I oh, caught you, that. Oh, you, you were like rooting for them, basically. Yeah, so I was like, oh, okay, so, but then I was like, he stopped sending cups. Wait, what happened? And then he didn't come back, and I'm like, oh, did he die? And then the dad sending him off to the Emerald Sea to... The Red find, Sea. Find, yeah. Oh, no, the Midnight Sea. The He's Midnight, in the Midnight Sea. sea. Go- Have you seen Princess Bride? The movie? No. Oh. I told him you did. It's actually funny because, okay, trust me, I won't say I give five stars. You guys saw that reading vlog. I was, like, obsessed with it. But mm-hmm. now that I just finished Mistborn, I actually think you probably would have liked that one better. Mm-hmm. Just because it has a lot more political intrigue, which you're usually more interested in. Got it. Wait. I'll, I'll add it to my TBR. And then I just make him read all of Brandon Sanderson like me. Yeah, uh, uh, footnote, she's turning into a fantasy bro. Just putting it out there. How dare you? <laughs> How dare I'm you? I'm just saying, you used to talk a lot of crap about fantasy bros. Because they're it, trash. So you're, I... you're like, mm, don't come at me, fantasy bros. And now you're like jumping in. you like, you were dipping your toes in to see because people give you recommendations. And you're like, oh, this is warm. Right into it. I said what I said. It's not It's not my <laughs> fault that his fan base is psychotic. Uh, not you guys. You guys are great. But some of his fan base were acting crazy. I've, I've seen the videos like, come at me, fantasy bros. So, you know, hands were thrown up and you were putting Vaseline on your hair. <laughs> so, ready to go. So, I was like, wow. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my <gasps> God, I love this. And I was like, ooh. See, I can admit when I'm wrong, though. I was <laughs> wrong good. about Brandy Sandy. That's a good and he's great. I'll All give right. you my opinion on the on the fantasy bro types after I read the book, and then you can add the the next one to Not the TBR. Not this one. This one is a this one is a different book. Oh uh, well, whatever the next one is, put it on the TBR, and then. Could you imagine, you guys, if he read this one? How funny! Which one's that one? It's like a dragon shifter romance, but it's why, why choose? Do you know what why choose is? Mm-hmm. It's like her and like five guys. So uh, like why choose? She doesn't have to pick one. She's like in a relationship with all of them. I mean. You're already poly, so what's going on with that? <laughs> Don't be putting my business out there. They don't know. They don't know about um, me. We'll probably update in the next reading vlog because this reading vlog needs to get wrapped up. But thank you, Dad, for joining us. Yeah. Let us know in the comments down below what you want my dad to read next because we have a whole series where my dad reads romance or he'll read anything. He doesn't have to be romance. Yeah. It could be mystery, thriller, cozy mysteries. Um, but we haven't done a video like that in a while. So give us your recommendations on what you want us to read together. Yeah. And be serious about your recommendations. I- right, love you. Love you too. Bye. Bye. I gotta update them on other stuff now. We're here for the final update. We finished the first book of the Mistborn series, The Final Empire. Guys, I love this. I love it. Okay, let me try to compose myself. First of all, I would just like to say, y'all are so fucking wrong. Y'all are so shady. All of you guys were telling me, read Mistborn, you're going to love it, Samantha, you're going to love it so much. Tell me why I was sobbing. I mean, yes, you guys were right, I loved it. Thank you for the recommendation. Tell me why I was sobbing at the end of this. I'm not going to do any spoilers, but for those of you who have read this series, which many of you have, and know what happens at the end, which many of you do, Tell me why I was sobbing. This being such a long series and me feeling so emotionally attached to so many characters, I was like, something is going to happen. This cannot be all happy-go-lucky all the time. Hmm. Wow. Wowza. I don't even know what to rate this book because I was so invested and I loved it so much. But I can also see the difference in writing styles between 
this series and his secret projects and i think i like the secret projects a little bit more secret projects have a little bit of everything it has the romance the really cool magic system the adventure versus this is like heavy epic fantasy really focusing on uh, the magic system Let's focus on the found family aspect but i feel like some of the side characters or some of the romances probably could have been more developed but then again this is the first book in the series so that might come at a later time. I can't think of like many other fantasy books that I love the magic system as much as I loved this. So yeah, definitely five stars, but a different type of five stars. You know what I mean? If you were to come to me and tell me you were a romance reader, I probably would push you in the direction of like Tress of the Emerald Sea and Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. If you were to come to me and say you really like fantasy, not really crazy about romance, and you just want to focus more on like political intrigue and magic systems, then I would push you towards Mistborn. So different vibes, but they're still five stars in my book because his writing, his writing hits. I'm just, I'm just gonna say that. Definitely don't judge a book by its cover because I was wrong. I was wrong. Brandon Sanderson, he did his big one. He, I love our heroine in this one. I know some people don't like her and she is unlikable at times, but I just feel like that added to her growth. And she's young too. She's like 16 years old. It made her feel more human and made her triumphs feel even more exciting and well-earned. So I really did love her as a character. I feel like this is also something that I could see myself coming back to and rereading because there's so many conversations being had as the story is being told. You have obviously the larger conversation for minority group being oppressed and forced into slavery and manual labor you have a lot of censorship of religion one of those fantasy books that's set in a fantastical world but has such real life issues in it that you're like oh this is not as far-fetched an idea oh i can't believe this book had me crying like i was sobbing it's a really strong book and i can see why so many people love this i'm going to continue into the second book because there are some small questions unanswered and i'm curious to see like where this world is going to take us my plan was to pick up another secret project i was gonna read the sunlit man but everyone's saying that i need to have a little bit more knowledge of the cosmere universe or they would recommend that so i don't know i don't know he also has like another secret project that's set in like a historical time period which I love. I did order that one. I just haven't gotten that book in the mail yet. So I'm going to end this video here, even though I did want to read three books in this video. Overall, my experience with Brandon Sanderson has been amazing. We have read three of his books so far. I gave all of them five stars. I am just in awe of his talent, his writing style. Also the narrator. Okay, this narrator eats. Like, I absolutely adore him. And the audiobooks are so well produced. Me and the Nightmare Painter was such a beautifully written book it honestly my heart ached when i was reading that book i was so in love with the world and the characters and the romance romance was so well crafted and just felt so classic and sweet if i had to pick a favorite from the three that i've read so far even though i gave all three of them five stars. I think Yumi the Nightmare Painter is just standing a little bit above the rest because it had all of those quintessential fantasy tropes that I love, right? It was an adventure. It had a cool magic system, but then the romance was also done so well. The side characters were so well fleshed out. Overall social commentary was done in such a subtle but impactful way. This discussion of supporting artists and supporting creatives and how even though our technology is so well advanced that AI can never really duplicate the passion of a true artist. And like that conversation is so real because it's a conversation we're having now, right? Most readers want to support artists and they don't like seeing AI on book covers and they have a very strong opinion on that. I agree with that. I agree with like supporting artists and all of that. And I feel like that discussion is really done again in such a subtle but impactful way in Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. And then we have Mistborn and I just loved the political intrigue. I love how it felt historical but also felt so real and the problems that our characters were struggling with. I loved the side characters. I loved... I loved our main character so much. Anyways, great, great, great five stars. And now I'm just yapping. I'm kind of repeating the same things. If you like the videos that are a little bit longer and you stayed this long, what emoji should we use? Let's do the painting emoji. I'm any painting emoji. If there's like a paintbrush or a paint palette for you, me, and the Nightmare Painter. Okay, so leave a bunch of painting emojis in the comments down below to let me know that you guys have stayed this long and you enjoyed the longer videos. I think. 
we're gonna end it here, my friends. Thank you for watching this video. A little bit of a Brandy Sandy fan these days. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what's happening. But um, if you guys want to see my journey into the Cosmere universe, let me know, and I'll do more reading vlogs because I'm definitely gonna continue to pick up his books. I mean. I bought a bunch of them, so I gotta read them. <laughs> Thank you guys for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. It means the absolute world to me. You guys are all staying happy and healthy, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!